pull them, burn them, poison them, get rid of weeds. No doubt you've heard that, but I think there's more to the story. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, a master gardener who discusses everything gardening so that you can become a better gardener. Today, I'm going to share with you 10 reasons why weeds can be good for your garden. I read an article recently that said the definition of a weed is a plant with no redeeming value. And I know there's a lot of gardeners who think the same way, but I think every plant has a redeeming value of some type. Because for me, the definition of a weed is just a plant that is growing in the wrong location. If you think about it, in nature, there's no such thing as a weed. There's just plants growing. Now, we try to put all of our beds in order and choose the plants that we're going to grow, and it becomes an artificial environment. And nature throws a whole bunch of other plants at us. Well, to us, those are weeds because they don't fit with our orderly concept of a garden. But if you just stop, think about those plants and where they're growing, and though they might be weeds because you don't want them growing among your squash, in the greater context of our garden, a lot of those plants can really be beneficial. What do you think about this sunflower plant? It's pretty big, regal, colorful, definitely makes a statement in the garden, but it's a weed. I didn't plant it. I planted the other plants in these beds, but this one just showed up and it looked healthy, it looked like it wanted to grow here, and I just let it go. My neighbor had the same thing happen. A sunflower popped up in their hoop house, they liked the look of it, they let it grow, and now it's growing out the top. I kind of hate the idea of cutting it down because it looks good and it serves a purpose in the garden. One of the purposes it serves is the first reason why weeds can be good. It's a food for pollinators. And these weeds growing in the paths and throughout my garden space feed pollinators too. In this brand new garden, I don't have a lot of flowers planted yet. Very few are blooming that I put in the ground. But these have occurred naturally and they attract pollinators, which is great because I need pollinators for the rest of my garden, for my squashes and my melons and everything else. Well, if I can't attract them with the flowers that I plant, why not attract them with the flowers that Mother Nature plants? And working with Mother Nature like that can really help some of our headaches in the garden. All the weeds growing in this area are naturalized plants. They're native to my area. I have no idea what most of them are. I just let them grow. And that really benefits me when it comes to my rabbits, because this is what my rabbits eat. Instead of going into my garden and chowing down on a lettuce or a turnip leaf or anything else that they could get to if they wanted, instead, the rabbits in my neighborhood are eating the native food that they grew up with. Why eat something they don't know anything about when they can have all of these delicious weeds growing right out their front door? And a lot of these weeds that are growing right next to my raised beds were the very first ones to host ladybugs early in the spring. Before I had anything growing that provided shelter and opportunity for the ladybugs to find food like aphids, well, all of that was already happening naturally throughout the weeds. So when the ladybugs appeared, they first appeared here among the native plants, among the weeds. And then as I put in my garden and aphids and other things began to appear, it was really easy for the ladybugs to just migrate a few feet and start helping me out. There are so many weeds that can attract beneficial insects because they provide a place for the eggs. They provide a place for the larva. They provide a place to overwinter. I'm not planning on removing any of this because 
It's right next to the area that I want the most benefits. And just like some of these plants will attract the beneficial insects to deal with the pests, there are also a lot of these plants that deal with pests directly. Some of them actually deter some of the harmful insects. Some of them are food for some of those same insects that could be eating the plants in your garden. So by allowing these plants to be sacrificed to the harmful bugs, you're saving a lot of the stuff in your garden. Now, I don't know enough about what all these plants are called and which is which. I just know that when you have a diverse landscape, a garden that's healthy, that those harmful insects are kept in check, not only by the plants and the beneficial insects, but just the balance of nature. Because a lot of these plants attract and support birds, and birds are really great at maintaining that balance. They'll eat the seeds off of some of these weeds, and then they'll go chow down on a bug that's starting to chew your broccoli. Another big reason why I let all these weeds grow as I'm building my garden is because weeds can act in a great way to improve your soil in so many different ways. My soil is not good. It's dense, it's compacted, it's really difficult for me to even push a finger into it. But these weeds are doing a great service because if I dig up some of these plants, you can see how hard it is to get the trowel in. Well, the weeds of these plants are pretty sturdy and they go down a good distance. And so these weeds are doing a great job of breaking apart the soil, making it looser and improving the texture. And that's a small part of what nature does all over the world to revitalize soil. You have these first plants, these pioneer plants that have those stocky roots that go down and help break apart the soil. And then once the soil is loose, more seeds blow in and more plants start to grow. And these are the plants that start adding nutrients to the soil. In the permaculture world, they're called dynamic accumulators. They also have the big roots. They typically go down deep and they're drawing nutrients from the soil deep down into their leaves and their stems. And when they die and fall on the surface, well, they release those nutrients helping to enrich that soil. And then more seeds blow in and more different types of plants grow. Notice I'm not calling them weeds at this point because these are plants that are serving a purpose. They're growing in an area and improving soil in the process. Now it takes a long time for all of this to happen naturally, for very poor soil to become very fertile soil but I can still use that concept within my garden. I can allow some of the plants to grow around the edges of my garden and then allow them to just fall in place as a mulch that will decompose and gradually improve the soil. Or I can hasten the process by pulling some of those plants and putting them into my compost pile where they'll release the same nutrients. And now I can take this compost that is nutrient rich, add it directly to my soil, and it improves it for all the plants that I intend to grow. You should do all you can to avoid bare ground in your garden. Now it's relatively easy around your plants. You can put mulches in place to cover the soil and keep it nice and alive. And that's what we want. We want a living soil in our garden. But if you have patches of bare ground, it becomes dirt. It becomes lifeless because the solar radiation is baking that surface and killing the microorganisms a few inches down. It doesn't take that many plants to shade the surface and protect the soil. And then when those plants die, they become food for those microorganisms within the soil. That's ideal. Now, whether it's an intentional ground cover or weeds that are protecting your soil and keeping it alive, it really doesn't matter. 
the soil is benefiting. And if you should live on a hill or a slope where you get a lot of runoff, well, these same weeds are now plants that are controlling soil erosion. You might want to put in something that is a little better looking, something that's an intentional ground cover, but until you get to that point, allow the weeds to grow. Allow the weeds to keep your soil from running down to your neighbor's yard. And as you continue in your efforts to build that healthy soil, well, weeds are instant barometers. They can tell you exactly what's wrong with your soil based on what type of plant is growing. Because there are some weeds that grow in low nitrogen soils and low phosphorus soils and low potassium soils. The different types of plants can tell you exactly what nutrients your soil needs. And it can tell you if you've got compacted soil. It can tell you if it's a low pH or a high pH. If you take the time and do a little bit of investigative work, you can look at a plant, identify it, and it will tell you what you need to make your soil healthier. It's important to realize that weeds don't grow in healthy soil. When we can get to that point where all the plants that are growing are the ones that we intend to grow or that have naturally blown in and are part of the native environment because they like our soil, that's an amazing goal to reach. And if you take that time and effort to learn to identify the weeds, you're going to find that many of them are edible and many are quite tasty. Earlier in the year, I had some videos where I showed me pulling the lamb's quarter out of these beds. Well, it was a weed because I didn't want that plant growing with my other plants. I got lots of comments and I'm fully aware that lamb's quarter is a delicious plant or a delicious weed if you want to look at it that way. The same with purslane. Many gardeners intentionally grow purslane and for the rest of us, it might be a weed. Dandelions are another great example. Every single part of a dandelion is edible. So learn more about the plants that are growing in your garden. And if it becomes something that you like to eat, well, it's no longer a weed. It's serving a purpose. And if you can learn to live with some of your weeds, maybe you can tone down the fanatical attitude that you have to kill all the weeds. Because often the easiest way to kill those weeds is with a poisonous chemical. And I don't like the idea of hazardous synthetic chemicals in my garden. I like that natural approach. I like nature in balance because it tends to take care of things. And when I know that there aren't any of those poisons in my environment, then I can allow my pet, Lily, to roam freely and lie down on the weeds in the shade. There's nothing that's going to harm her anywhere in this space. Now, I do realize that there are bad weeds out there. There are pernicious weeds that can be harmful to you and your pets. There are invasive weeds that can take over your entire garden and you lose everything. I understand that bad plants need to be dealt with. I'm just trying to convey the idea that not all weeds are bad. There are many weeds that are good. You just have to decide how you're going to use them to benefit the garden. Because if the weeds are growing and the insects are there and the soil is alive and you have the birds and the other activities that are creating that balance, then the plants that you're intentionally growing in your vegetable garden and in your flower gardens will do better and you'll definitely appreciate reaching that point of equilibrium where everything is doing well. To learn how to grow some of those plants and how to get your garden in balance, I suggest you consider watching one of these Gardener Scott videos next. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening. Mm -hmm.